This is the 2023 GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate Edition. Today we're gonna to check out all the features and then go on an adventure. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. It kind of blows my mind with how upscale trucks are going. This one we have right here is a great example. This is the full-size GMC Sierra 1500 Denali Ultimate. This is the top of the line Sierra, and it is absolutely loaded with good stuff. You got leather, you got metal, you have a premium Bose audio system, you have a big touchscreen, it has a V8 under the hood. I mean, is there anything this truck doesn't have? Well, with all the layers of luxury, the thing this truck can't do is actually what most people buy trucks to do, and that is utility. Yes, it has a V8, but it also has a short bed, which really isn't job site compatible. It also has 22 inch wheels, which means we're probably not gonna off-road it. So ultimately, you gotta ask, what's the point, right? Well, we might find out what the point of this truck is a little bit later when we go on an adventure. But first, let's check out all the features. 6.2 liter V8 engine. That's a big honker by modern standards. And it puts out 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to a standard 10-speed automatic transmission and automatic four-wheel drive is standard as well. EPA rates economy at 15 miles to the gallon in the city and 19 on the highway. The Denali Ultimate comes with so many features, we really don't have a lot of options here. Uh, the most notable one being the blue metallic paint. Prices you see it here, $82,855 US dollars, including destination. Wow, that is a lot of money. The wheels here are of course 22 inch units. They are massive and look at these things, they are so detailed. In fact, there's already a scratch right there, so hey, that one's not on me. Anyway, we'll have to be really careful with taking this down trails a little bit later because these things are gonna scratch super easy and we actually have smaller sidewall because of that. And the tires here are Bridgestone Alenza All Seasons and they are in a 275-50 R22 fitment. Another important point is that ground clearance is only just under eight inches. Now in the back here, we have a short box. You can get it with a standard box as well. This does come with the GMC Multi-Pro tailgate. We can fold it down once. It has an integrated step, which is really cool. It even has integrated kicker sound system. It also has an integrated swing out handle to assist stepping into the bed. Makes it easy to get up into the truck. It's a composite bed insert, looks pretty good. Uh, we also have a power socket over here, plenty of tie downs. Yeah, not bad. So depending on which configuration of Sierra you get, you can get payload capacities of over 2,200 pounds. I'm not sure exactly what this trim level is because their website is not useful. Uh, however, <laughs> towing capacity on this one is 8,900 pounds. Get going up and in. The second row of this crew cab is massive. You got lots of room in here. And if you need to store stuff securely, just flip up the seats. And as an added bonus, you also get in-seat storage as well, which is pretty cool. Climbing on up. So much leg room. You could definitely fit a whole crew in here, which is good. That's the point. I got lots of room for my head, my legs. I mean, I don't even need to say that I'm six foot one legs torso proportionate because anybody would fit back here. Now, in terms of amenities, we don't have a lot going on, unfortunately. We just have USB-C, USB-A power sockets, seat warmers, which is nice, uh, three stages of heat, and vents and cup holders. And more cup holders. And that's it.
yeah, no climate control back here, which I'm kind of surprised by at this price point. Uh, what we do get in terms of materials is very nice. This leather is definitely high quality, high grade. You know, I just noticed the embossing here. That's pretty cool. No privacy screen though. Hmm. I just feel like they didn't do everything they could do for this second row. Let's check out the front. Okay, let's power it up. GMC Denali. Yeah. So what we have here is design language that is pretty consistent with other GMC products. Uh, and you can definitely tell that there are roots of the Silverado in this vehicle, uh, as in the overall template is very similar. However, here we have materials that go above and beyond what you would get in the Chevy offering. Uh, we have fine wood, we have metal. Is that metal? I don't know what that is, but it's cool. I like the texture. We have the leather up here with the contrast stitching. The headliner is suede, uh, or is it Alcantara? I think that might be actual suede. Uh, the seats are just really high-end premium leather. And then they have this stitching down here that looks like it's straight off of a saddle. Uh, it's just really quite, it's quite an experience being in this vehicle. I've only been in this truck for a few minutes. The seats feel pretty comfortable, uh, but it's too early to say. One thing I will say is awesome is that there is, there's a button down here, and that gives me control over the massagers. Yes, this has built-in massage seats, which is awesome. Oh, I could really use upper shoulder right now. Let's go. Oh my gosh, there's so many options here. Upper shoulder, lumbar. Okay, that's cool. I'm always down for a back massage while driving. Ah, uh, yes, nice. Now, one thing I do like is that they didn't go overboard with screens. Yes, we have a digital gauge cluster front and center. It's very clear, easy to read, lots of designs I can use uh, to display the information the way I want to, which is great. Uh, but over here, we also have a similarly sized screen. We don't have a huge 14 inch. And I think that with the Toyota Tundra, Toyota went too far by putting that 14 inch screen in there. It's just, it's just too big. <laughs> I, I think I've come now to the conclusion that that is just too big of a screen. Um, and then what GMC has done here is not only do they go with a slightly smaller screen, but it's clear, it looks good. Uh, it has lots of great features. Uh, we even have Google Maps integrated. Uh, I can even integrate this with my own profile so that I can basically save things to my Google Maps and then see them show up in here, which is neat. Uh, we have a lot of different command items on the left. We can do towing configuration, of course, maps, mobile integration, music. Uh, we do have XM satellite radio, of course. It's a little on the slow side to respond. I would like it to be a little bit brisker, which is funny because I could have swore in the uh, the new Chevy Colorado I just reviewed, which has a similar interface, it seemed snappier. Uh, I'm just kind of surprised that a high-end product like this, that we still have a little bit of lag. But in the main menu here, we can also play with cameras. Uh, and the cameras are great on this. We have top-down front view, we have wheel view, we have ball hitch view, uh, basically all the views, which is awesome. But one of the things that I like best about this setup is the fact that all of the actual aircon and seat warmers and seat coolers, they're all down here and they're all physical buttons, which is where it should be, especially on a premium truck vehicle. Uh, we have, of course, dual zone climate control. I kind of would have expected tri-zone with one zone for the back, but we don't get that here. But I can set the dials. The dials feel good. Actually, all the dials in here feel really good. They have a little plastic insert with a little metal surround. Um, yeah, no complaints on the touch points. They all feel really good. The steering wheel feels good. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, they uh, it auto set to have the steering heat on. Not my favorite thing to have, but you know, it's okay. Um, speaking of the steering wheel, we have the GM styled radio controls in the back. And then they've also integrated these little paddle shifters up top. So if you want to flip through the 10 speed automatic transmission, you can do that there, uh, which is good if you're going up hills, down hills, that kind of stuff. If you want to use compression braking, that's a way to do that. 
Going back to the buttons here, underneath the air con, we do have uh, all the things that are functional for the vehicle itself. We have lane detection, parking, auto start stop. If we want to turn that off, we just hit a button there. Um, I have a power gate uh, to release the rear gate here traction control, and then we also have hill descent control. Now, speaking of hill descent control, that's something that you would normally use for trails and whatnot. If you want to go into a trail mode, that button is over here. There's basically a little toggle, and you can switch between normal, sport, and off-road. Though, you got to keep in mind, this vehicle with 22-inch wheels and all-season radials, it's not going off-road. We will hit a trail in a little bit. That's not the real reason for this vehicle to exist. I mean, no skid plates, 22 inch wheels, less than eight inches of ground clearance. They have the AT4 if you wanna do some off-road shenanigans, uh, but this vehicle is definitely about lux, it's about cruising, it's about going out on the town. Because this is a GMC pickup, it does have uh, a dual range gearbox, uh, four high, four low, and then also has an auto mode, so you don't need to worry about whether or not you're in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Uh, you could basically flip that on. You're in two-wheel drive most of the time. If it detects any slip, it'll then kick in the four-wheel drive system. The mirror up here is a video camera. If I want to look through, if I have too much stuff in my bed or in the second row here, I can look through it with the camera system there. I also have a heads-up display over there. Lots of active safety stuff, including um, adaptive cruise control, blind spot warning, collision mitigation, that surround view camera system I showed you earlier, and all that good stuff. You can get the Super Cruise hands-free adaptive cruise control system on this truck. However, our test truck did not come with it, so we won't be playing with that. If you're doing any towing, you got a little tow controller here. Got lots of bins and stuff to put drinks and whatnot. You got a couple USB sockets there. You can put your phone down here. There's a built-in charger. Ooh, lots of stuff here. Actually, I got a power socket. I got two USB sockets, got a big bin. And uh, of course, since you do have a charger here, yes, the phone can be connected wirelessly. You can do wireless CarPlay or Android Auto up here. It's actually really easy. Um, I do like this system. You just click add, you go to Bluetooth, you find it. It comes up as my GMC. Right there, I got a lot of devices here. It pairs it, pair, allow, and boom, we are now connected, which is great. I've now enabled CarPlay, it takes a moment to get CarPlay working. While we're waiting for CarPlay, I can point out that there's a glove box over there, right underneath that really cool emboss. Oh, am I supposed to be up? Oh, use CarPlay. I was waiting. It was prompting me. <laughs> right. It's all these little messages. Why can't I just say yes once? Why do I have to answer like 50 messages? Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Okay, now we have Apple CarPlay. We are working here, which is great. Looks really good on this display. I love the clarity. I love the resolution. Just very nice overall. So one final thing that I want to say before we head on out is... You see that annoying flicker back there? That is actually caused by the LED lights that they have in the overhead. Uh, now they're not that way up here, they're only that way back there. And do you know what that is? That is a cheap substandard LED. When filming, we often use LED lights to fill in spaces. You don't see them on camera, of course. But um, usually, in, even in modern vehicles, the LEDs don't flicker. Those ones flicker. In an $80,000 plus vehicle, that is pretty awful. Now, when you're actually in the vehicle, most people, most people won't see the flicker. Some people are sensitive to that and will actually visually be able to see it. Oh, <laughs> I'm talking about me. So, uh, yeah, I don't like that. Uh, will it bug you? Probably a one in a thousand chance that that type of stuff actually bugs you. Okay, let's drive. <laughs> Man, this is like the last of the big V8s. A 6.2 liter unit at that. Let's go ahead and uh, punch it and see what it does. Oh, I love the sound of that V8 sounds so good. 
It is a sound that will be gone, of course, but you know, electric and hybrid, they have their benefits too. So I'm not gonna like shortchange those just because I don't make the sounds of a V8. And clearly, I mean, there's, there's very convincing, strong arguments for a hybrid system. I mean, Toyota's Tundra does a great job of using its new hybrid powertrain to its full advantage. And when I'm driving the Tundra, I'm not like saying, oh no, I wish I had the V8. No, because it's perfectly fast. It can haul a lot uh, and it's relatively fuel efficient. So it's got that going for it. So I said that the V8 has a lot of punch, but let's see just how much punch it has with a zero to 60. So I'm gonna switch the drive mode to sport. I'm gonna stop completely and I'm just gonna mosh the throttle and let's see what it does. Three, two, one, hit it. Takes a second, whoa, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. And 60. 5.99 seconds. That's brisk. <laughs> wow, 5.99 seconds. That's actually better than I thought it would be. Uh, for the size of this truck and the sheer mass that it's moving, that's quite good. So this does have paddle shifters. Um, I'm in sport mode right now. Let's flip it and see what it does. No. So the paddle shifters seem to only work in low mode, but with low mode, I can go through all 10 gears. That's interesting. Let's see how quickly this shifts. So we're gonna shift down. Ooh, wow, that's some kick. And then shift. Yeah, that's okay. You know, uh, the truck experience, it just, it's not really made for manual shifting. However, if you do need to take control of your shifting uh, because you wanna use a lot of compression braking going downhill, or you just wanna have a little bit more control over what the truck is doing, you do have that option with these little paddles up here and going into L mode down here. So there's that. Punch it. Man, this thing's comfortable. I kinda wanna go on a road trip with it. Hmm. Well, we'll come back to that later. One thing I really like about the GMC over the Tundra is the fact that this has an automatic four-wheel drive mode. If you're talking over 80 grand for a truck, it has to come with an automatic four-wheel drive system. I mean, why would you force somebody who's buying a luxury good, a high-end thing, to manually change between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive? That just seems like the easiest thing you can fix. Uh, also, it seems like one of the easiest things you can offer a customer. When driving in the automatic four-wheel drive mode, I don't have to decide if I wanna be fuel economy two-wheel drive or if I want better traction of four-wheel drive. The truck will decide for me. If there's a little bit of slip, it will instantly engage the four-wheel drive system to give me that grip that I need. Are there compromises? Yes. Technically, they exist. Will a buyer of this truck ever, ever, ever experience, you know, that difference? No, probably not, highly unlikely. Um, however, if you are a person who really wants to pick whether you're in four wheel drive or two wheel drive um, at the time that you want to do it, well, then maybe the Tundra is for you. Maybe the Ford F-150 is for you. Oh wait, the Ford F-150 has an auto mode also. It does, so the Ford F-150 Platinum is still a good option. Uh, but I would say that the GMC seat massagers do feel better than the F-150. Sorry, Ford, it's true. <laughs> but Ford has a one-up on the GMC because it has the Pro Power system, which is amazing. The ability to put that much power out, to be able to use an, a welder in the field, powered by your truck, I still can't get over that. And if remote power is a thing for you, none of this really matters because the Ford is the only truck that really offers that. However, if that is not what you need, uh, the GMC here offers quite a lot. Whether you go with this super high-end uh, Denali Ultimate Edition or you just you know go with a regular Denali. A regular Denali, how funny does that sound? So we've looked at a lot of the details of this truck, but now it's time to test its off-road capability by taking it through our easy course. And I have to admit, I'm a little concerned because we only have just under eight inches of ground clearance with this thing. 
that plus a long wheelbase uh, can make even our easy course a little bit difficult simply because we might end up straddling one of the big humps. I hope not, but let's give it a try and see what happens. So we're just gonna run through our easy course here. We call this one Chicken Run. And the reason for that is, uh, goes right by my chicken coop. Now this is our easy course, but it could be difficult for this one because there's a large hump in the middle that we use smaller crossovers to kind of climb over. Uh, because this has such a long wheelbase, it may end up straddling it because the, um, the bump is bigger than eight inches and this only has eight inches of ground clearance. Actually a little less than that. Um, also we have running boards, which I wanna make sure I don't damage. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable those from de deploying. Uh, so we can go to vehicle, scroll down, power assist steps, and we're gonna say we're turning off automatic. So those won't deploy if I have to open the door to check ground clearance while we're going over that hump. Okay, so uh, in terms of setup, there is an off-road mode which will affect our throttle. Uh, it'll also affect how the adaptive suspension um, handles the bumps, uh, though this does not have height adjustability. So you're gonna see that there, there's no extra ride height here, which is a little unfortunate. I am also gonna turn on cameras, which kind of wish there was a hard button for, there isn't. Uh, I have to go here and click cameras and now I have nice guidelines in the front and I can also see side. I mean, the cameras are all over the place, which is great. Uh, unlike the Hummer we tested recently, this does not have uh, an underbody camera though. Underbody cameras are cool. I do like that this does have a nice view of the truck bed, which you can also see. Uh, you can turn that on while you're driving, even on the freeway to ch check your load, which is great. Um, I do like that it has a carbon fiber bed liner, which is really neat. Uh, but here nor there, let's let's focus on the uh, what we're doing right now. Okay, so I'm in drive. I'm gonna start going forward. I make sure I'm in trail mode. I'm pretty sure I'm in trail mode. Uh, okay, now we're in off-road mode. And I'm just gonna slowly ease forward. Man, this truck is big. It's so big. Now, in terms of off-road capability, this has an auto locker in the rear. They kind of do that a lot on these uh, uh, GM products. And I find that it works pretty good. Um, although I, I can totally relate to somebody who says, I wanna have more control over my rear locker. And yeah, I, I can see that. Okay, let's, let's get up there. Is that gonna lock? Yep, yep. Oop, watch that tree right there. It's interesting, the parking sonars didn't go off. Readjust, this truck is so big. <laughs> now I am in auto four wheel drive right now. I just think it's kind of uh, interesting to uh, see how that responds. Let me go up and go over. There we go. Boom, and we're set up. So we've just been driving in four auto, but I think what I wanna do is actually switch it to four low. And the reason is I wanna have complete control of climbing over this hump. I wanna be able to drive as slow as possible. Uh, for four wheel drive, shift to neutral, right. Neutral, all the lights went on, we're now in four low. Okay, put it in drive. Now let's see what this crawl ratio is. Now you see these two poles on the side, they actually indicate the width of the trees down in our uh, off-road course are like rocky off-road course, uh, specifically the logging trail. And we have them there uh, to check the width, but we're not gonna take this onto the logging road course simply because uh, these wheels are so big, they will scratch. And um, car makers hate it when we scratch their wheels. And that would absolutely just totally trash them. So we don't wanna do that. I'm gonna get a wheel view here. Make sure that I'm clearing the flagpole over there. We should be good. Straighten it out. Now, hopefully ground clearance isn't an issue. Let's take a look what we got here. Eh, we're doing fine. Of course, we haven't gone over the hump yet. Go back down. Now we're gonna ease down. Hopefully we don't hit. Oh, we just barely get by. Nice. Uh, the, you know what's not fine? The fact that my massage unit just shut off. Oh, I have to use the controller. I can't do it on the screen. Man, that's just so weird. Why can't I just do it on the screen? There are some bugs in this system, that's for sure. 
Okay, driving forward. This is some for scraping. Yeah, we're lifting now, we're good. Up and over. I think we have plenty of articulation, so we're not even gonna really lift a wheel here. So go left and right. And we're in four low, so it's locked that center transfer case. So we got a 50-50 split and it doesn't vary at all. Right. Okay. So obviously very good to drive around town, um, other than the fact that it's huge. <laughs> it also is uh, very capable even on, you know, pretty easy roads. I think it's time to go on a much longer adventure because a truck like this is designed for driving long distances. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up my son, we're gonna throw a couple bikes in the back, and we're gonna head to Eastern Washington to see what this thing is like on a bit of a road trip. I have an Upco 2x2 all electric and you're riding what today? The Varla Eagle One scooter. Right. Both very fast all wheel drive electric vehicles, which is pretty fun. Uh, we're going to be taking them over to the driving sports test hill over in eastern Washington and run them across some of the trails. But that's not what this video is about. We're going to have more on that uh, on our other channel, Riding Sports TV, which is a new sister channel we have. Today, it's all about the Denali Ultimate. And I have to say, riding in this thing, it's pretty great. I mean, 6.2 liters under the hood. That's a big honking V8. Uh, the MPGs, according to the computer, aren't the best. Uh, it's showing that we're getting about 14 MPG. Ouch. <laughs> but power is plentiful. I mean, the load in the back is basically no load in the back. It's inconsequential how much we have loaded back there right now. But on the highway here, the adaptive suspension is soaking up the kind of unsmooth parts of the freeway here. Uh, we're on I-90 about to go over Snoqualmie Pass. And so far, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. What's uh, your favorite thing about this truck? I like the seat massagers here. They're yeah. Really nice. Yeah, the seat massagers are fantastic. I don't like how they turn off every while or so. Yeah, that's why they run for about 20 minutes, I think, uh, which is a little disappointing. I do find that that's pretty common with all vehicles, uh, but still, every every once in a while, my seat massager will turn off and I'll be like, oh. <laughs> So, uh, in terms of styling, though, what do you think of this interior? Um, it's nice. I like the wood. Not sure if it's real or not. It's real. No, that's real wood. Oh, cool. Yeah. I find these uh, little patterns interesting, and I like that they include, like, the coordinates of the Denali Mountain. Yeah, that is really neat, isn't it? Yeah. So, they got some nice touches. They have good materials. I like that this infotainment screen isn't, like, they didn't do what Toyota did and just slap this huge 14-inch display up here. It's a good size, it's functional. I also really like that I can go look at cameras while I'm driving. Uh, now it's interesting, if you start with a rear view camera while you're driving, you can keep that camera on, but the moment you turn it off, you're gonna be stuck with two camera views, and that is a bed camera, which I really like, so I can see that the scooter is still fairly securely there. It looks like it's a little it might topple off any moment, but it's doing okay so far. And then I can also look at the hitch on the back to make sure that everything is good with our scooter carrier. Now, I did not actually uh, load this the Upco 2x2 bike into the back of the truck. I probably it would probably fit uh, either straight or sideways because that's a you know it's a pretty good size for a, a short bed. But I don't have a ramp but I do have an accessory carrier. So we're using the accessory carrier today, which makes this vehicle already, you know, this already very large truck even longer. So yeah, we got, we got a lot of metal down the highway here. <laughs> but yeah, visibility is great. The features are good. I'm really enjoying driving this thing. Yeah, 80 grand, that's a lot of money for a truck, but it's not that unusual you'll spend easily the same amount of money for a fully loaded F-150 Platinum. Uh, and I, I have to say, I mean, there's a lot to like about this truck over the F-150. However, 
I really like that hybrid setup with the Pro Power in the F-150. For me, that still leans me from this to a Ford. That's about it though, because everything else about this truck I actually really like. So yeah, we are going out to the driving sports test hill today, and we are basically going out there just to run some scooters around for fun. I'm not going to be taking this onto the challenging parts of the course though, and the reason is because these wheels are ridiculously big, and they're expensive, and they will scratch immediately. Still, I am hoping that there will be a little snow out there so we can test out at least how well this auto all-wheel drive system works along with that auto locker in the back. So we, we have a little fun for the truck planned and then uh, Corbin and I are gonna take the rest of the day off and uh, go scootering around the uh, property. <laughs> so have you ridden your scooter on uh, snow before? Um, Only a little bit around the uh, house. Yeah, how did that work out? Pretty good, did slip out quite a bit. Okay, well we'll have some maybe some fun with that today or maybe we'll uh, get wet, miserable and then go get some hot chocolates. Sounds good. Okay, good. <laughs> On this trip, I am using cruise control, and this does have adaptive cruise control with lane detection. So this system is a hands-on system, but I just want to show you that with lane detection on, I'm going to take my hands off, and what we're going to do here is when it detects the lines, it's going to bump us back in. I just want you to see how the system acts and reacts. It's fine. It tells you where the lanes are if you happen to get lazy, uh, but it's not going to replace paying attention, obviously. <laughs> so we have looked at the Super Cruise system, which is available on a number of GM different products. Uh, that is a hands-off. It'll actually drive down the road on geofenced freeways. Uh, but we don't have it today. That said, unless you're doing a lot of long haul driving, I don't know if you really need that system. It's neat. Uh, but, you know, I think for most average people, the adaptive cruise lane detect is more than enough. We've now been in this truck for uh, close to two hours. How are you feeling comfort wise? I mean, seats are great. Yeah. Not feeling any soreness anywhere, I don't think. Okay. Now, I have mentioned in this show multiple times, I'm six foot one. Yeah. You're not particularly tall. How is visibility for somebody who's shorter? Um, If you put the seat up all the way, it's pretty good, but yeah. not really too great when you're down low. Yeah, yeah, because this dash is really high, right? Yeah. It's kind of hard to see out of the dash. Is your seat all the way up right now? It is all the way up right now. <laughs> Man. Oh, well. He still has a growth spurt coming, so. Hopefully. Maybe he, too, someday will be six foot one, legs torso proportionate. Or not. It doesn't really matter. So here we are at the Driving Sports Test Hill, and you haven't been out here for a while, have you? No. So I think what we'll do is we're gonna take that mainline road that'll get us to the highest elevation of the property. At that point, we can unload the bikes and just ride down. I think that's gonna be fun. So looking at this hill, what do you think? Oh, it looks pretty steep, but doable. I may have concerns about the ice though. The spots of snow, that is old snow, and so it basically is, really thick ice underneath mm, yeah. and then in the areas where there's no snow the barrier areas there's water running underneath from the melting and that has created a really mucky soupy kind of condition so we have a lot of different traction things going on here so uh yeah i think let's just do it all right let's go so we're in auto four-wheel drive and we have the locker is our auto rear locker it just kicks on when it, has, when it detects a difference of 100 RPM between the left and right wheels, it'll lock those two together and spin them at the same time, uh, which could help in tricky, you know, traction issues. Now, I don't think we're going to have a problem here. I'm just hoping that it will really kind of show um, the capability of this vehicle because somebody who has this specific trim, I don't think they're going to do something harder than this. This isn't built for off-roading. Uh, and this is, I've seen roads to cabins and stuff that look very much like this. So this is a good example, I think. Yeah, so far, no problem. Clearly not an issue. Now it is getting soupy on the left. So I'm, ooh, ooh, actually I'm gonna try to stick to the right of the road here because we are rutting in. Oh, see us slipping around? That is not intentional. 
And there are some bigger rocks over there that I don't want to scratch. I know I keep saying I don't want to scratch these wheels, but let's just say I've gotten in trouble in the past for scratching wheels. And I want to try to minimize that as much as possible. Okay, well this, this was the easy leg. The hard leg is actually just right up ahead. So as you can see, we've got a lot more snow and ice and a steeper climb up to the top. So this next section is steeper, icier. Okay, and up we go. Yeah, my wife wouldn't like that very much if we, if we fell off the side of the hill. So we're climbing, we're climbing, it's doing fine. Oh, it is slippery. Ooh, we are actually slipping, slipping everywhere, uh, thanks to these all-season tires, which are really not designed for this. And the surface of the ground is frozen, but it's just at that thaw point, so it gets slimy as soon as we start hitting it. How are you feeling so far? It's pretty fine. Yeah, good, good, fine. <laughs> are you going to be ready to ride down once we get to the top? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so here we go. There's the view. How's that? Look at that over there, the mountains. Mm -hmm. It's pretty epic. So that's our look at the 2023 GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate Edition. I think that if you are looking for the ultimate in current trucks, this is a good one to consider. However, Ford's F-150 Pro Power System, I think is a big convincer for looking at the Ford instead. But uh, this is great. I really enjoyed this truck. Uh, obviously, this exact package isn't for me. I want more off-road capability, and this one really isn't set up for that. But an AT4, right up my alley. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them. Now we're going to leave you with a montage hitting the hill. Let's do it. What we have here is the Upco 2x2 utility bike. This is an all electric bike that is kind of more like a retro motorcycle. It will go up to 30 miles per hour. It has a maximum range of about 75 miles, thanks to a 3.1 kilowatt hour battery. We place right back down here. And instead of using a central drive mechanism, it has two electric hub motors, one on the front, one on the back, which means it's all wheel drive. He's gonna be riding on a Varla Eagle One, which is basically the same thing, but in scooter form. It has 2000 kilowatt hub motors, just like this one, but it's smaller, more compact, and uh, pretty fast. <laughs>